third quarter training for Benicia emergency response teams focuses on triage and emergency medicine. Okay, this is the oral cavity, the tongue, looking in the vocal cords, and then you can look on down. We'll pass this around. How do you do a head tilt chin lift? You will actually have stations today where every single one of you will perform a head tilt chin lift. Very simple, walk up to the person, stand some distance away at first and ask them if they are okay. Don't go right over them and start to look, listen and feel. They may get up and they may be combative from a head injury. We don't want you to become a victim. So first approach the person from afar, stand away from their direct line of contact, ask them if they're okay. And then if they're not, go up and do your look, listen and feel and then do the head tilt and chin lift. And we'll be demonstrating this over and over again today. And you will also perform this. I mean, you walk up to them and say, are you all right? What do you care? You know, get away from me. Ex exactly. You walk away and you identify that that person probably has a head injury. That's the most common cause for a combative person at the scene. So you take out your tag, and if you can tag them, tag them as an immediate. They have a head injury, yeah. most likely. If you have other rescuers with you or other walking wounded who can help restrain him, if he is causing an injury to somebody else, then you can go ahead and do that. But if you can isolate him and he's just being combative in his place and he's not interfering with your rescue effort, just tag him, or either document it on your paper that you have a combative person with a probable head injury. Okay. Most people become combative and they don't have enough circulation to their brain and they're in shock. When you're doing a head tilt chin lift, you don't want the head to go back so far that it necessarily hyperextends the neck and causes a neck injury. <laughs> The first thing you want to do is to position them on their back if possible. So you go ahead and form a very simple maneuver. Use the shoulder and the hip to turn the person over. Best not to pull on an arm. If they've already dislocated their shoulder, you could cause a further injury. You walk up and say, are you okay? If she says, yes, I'm okay, her airway is open. Are you okay? <coughs> All right. She's not <laughs> responding. It's likely that she either has agonal respirations and she's going to be <coughs> in the process of dying or her airway is obstructed. So the next thing you do is the look, listen, and feel. So you look to see if the chest or the abdomen is rising. If you need to expose the chest, expose the chest and see if the chest is rising. You look, you listen, you put your ear close to their mouth and listen and see if you can hear breath sounds. And then you feel, you just lay the ha your hand on the chest and see if you can feel any movement. I'm assuming that I can not feel any movement, I cannot see any movement and I cannot hear any breath sounds. So now I have to do my head tilt, chin lift. This may be a very old person whose neck has not tilted back in 50 years. If you don't want to be cranking that neck all the way back, you might cause a cervical spine injury. You just want to tilt the back, head back far enough that you can clear the airway. So you put your hand on the forehead and tilt the head back. At the same time, you put your other hand under the chin and pull the chin forward. You don't really want to see much more movement than that. After do you do the head tilt chin lift, you look, listen and feel again and see if you can hear breathing. Now I can hear breathing, I can see the chest moving. Am I going to leave her and walk away? No, because she'll promptly put her head back forward, turn her head to the side and obstruct her airway again and start making those awful sounds she was making a while ago, indicating that her airway is not working. So we restore her. Now what do I do? Do I stay here with her? We've got to have somebody else, but I don't have anybody else here, so what else could I do? <coughs> Very good. I could get a shoulder roll and slip a shoulder roll under her shoulders. That will put her neck back, and that will maintain her position. If, if I can't even do that, and I don't have anyone who can hold the head and hold the chin forward for me, I'll put her into a rescue position. How do we do a rescue position? Turn him on the side. Again, use the shoulder and the hip to turn a person over. So we're going to turn her on her side. To maintain her position like this, we're going to bring the upper the limb that's on the higher side forward. So we're going to go ahead and bring this limb forward and over. This will ensure that her weight is distributed to the forward side and she's going to be able to lie there. We're going to bring the arm over because otherwise the upper trunk might fall back. So we'll bring the other arm over. And we're going to use her other hand to hold her, her um, head in the correct position and perform the head elevation. 
So we're actually going to take this hand and use this under her head to hold her head forward. Now she's in a rescue position. She's going to stay like this. She's stable in this position and she'll continue to have respirations. Look, listen, and feel before you leave her. Tag her as red. All right? Okay, you're up. It's fixed. And when you start doing a jaw thrust and putting your hand here yeah, you. and pulling, you're really hyperextending the neck now. Yes. That's a very forceful movement. You're distracting the whole neck. So you just want to do a chin lift, head tilt, very gentle, and you can use your hands to hold the soft tissues open. You don't want to put your finger in the mouth. Do a finger sweep like they used to teach because the victim might respond and bite your fingers. So. How to assess for respirations like we just talked about? Look, listen, and feel. Now we 